this card. <laughs> it isn't even paid for yet. We can move into my folks' summer place anytime we want to. It's boarded up since they died. We can make it livable. It's only ten miles from here. What was that? We're not the only two out here. <laughs> <laughs>
Hey, hey, Lieutenant. Answer this press gives me the hours. I am nervous. If this is the only way I can have a drink. Go get your drink, sir. Now just give it to me one more time. I told it to you more, 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 more than 50 times. Once more, sir. I was asleep by the rear gate of the cemetery. I heard a thumping sound. I heard a woman scream. That woke me up. That woke me up. Then I tried to go halfway back to sleep, but the sun was coming off. I couldn't, couldn't keep my eyes closed. So I got up and walked a bit, and then I, I saw a oh, dead man, terrible, oh, terrible. And then another man climbing out of an open grave, got up yelling, screaming, and I looked down in the grave, and there she was, with her dress up and the rest of her body naked. I started running down, Lieutenant, yelling and yelling, and running until, until the patrol the cop picked me up. And I had a drink since. When you saw the man running, can you remember if the sun had completely risen? I was so frightened when I saw that dead boy's face, I couldn't think of anything else. Try to think now. I don't remember the sun. I only know it was like a, a grain of when the night is over. You can go now, Zach. Just check in with us every day for a while. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Lieutenant. I will. I will. And, and, Lieutenant, I'll be down by the Bible mission, too. <laughs> and, and, and no more, more cemetery for me. Good thinking, Zach. Dr. Evans, room 312. Dr. Evans, room 312. Aren't you going to hold Zach? Mm -hmm. He was drunk. Maybe he blew his top and killed the kid. I wouldn't put it past him. Zack is harmless. And what's all this about the sun having come up or not? The kid's body was drained of blood, wasn't it? It was badly cut up. The blood just drained out. Then where is it? It wasn't on the ground, it wasn't in the car. I figure it was killed somewhere else and then dumped in the graveyard. Maybe you're right. Now look, Lieutenant. All day long you've been dismissing every possibility I've come up with. I don't mind telling you, I don't like it. Now, we got a young man who has been murdered in some freaky way. A young girl, half out of her mind, who may or may not have been sexually assaulted, and a crypt from which someone stole an old corpse. Now, how about asking some questions around that campus? We will, Duffy. And any place else you feel, we might come up with something. All right, then. All right. Dr. Hayden, radiology. Dr. Hayden, radiology. Leslie Hollander was raped, Lieutenant. There are contusions and bad bruises on her back and on her legs. Now she's gradually coming out of the shop. May I try to speak to her? Well, all right, but just for a few minutes. Leslie, there are some gentlemen here from the police to see you. Miss Hollander, I'm Lieutenant Panzer. This is Sergeant Duffy. I'd like to talk to you about what happened last night. It's not only what happened to you, miss. It's what could happen to others in the future. It's your duty under the law to... I'm going to show you some pictures. Now, it's possible that a man that did this to you is in these pictures. Now, I'm going to hold them so that you can easily glance at each one. Keep on flipping them. And you keep on looking at them. The faces, Miss Holland. Faces. That's a good one. Uh, 
Can't you see she needs rest? Now, Olga, we're not going to hurt Leslie. Come on now. Like they caught him. The chase led through the Boston subway system on foot. He accidentally fell on the third rail, and he was electrocuted. They shipped the body to California and placed it in that crypt. Almost three years ago. Just suppose the boyfriend raped her. And just suppose she's trying to give us the runaround. And just suppose our boyfriend committed suicide by running backwards into a gravestone. Lieutenant, you got a great record on the force. You could very easily be up for chief. But just let it be known that you believe that somebody got juiced with 50,000 volts and three years later climbs out of his grave, commits a murder and a rape, and then runs off into the sunrise like Bella Lugosi. You'll lose your job, your pension, everything. You've convinced me. Like hell I have. Been more cooperative. No, no. Don't struggle through them. Just relax. No, no. Please leave me. Don't touch me. <laughs> <laughs>
they know everything. Pills, needles, talk, and the people wither away. The pills help me, Olga. They help you forget you're alive. Olga, I would like to talk to Leslie alone for a few minutes. I've been taking care of Leslie for 24 hours a day, but now I have to leave for a few minutes? It's all right, Olga. My husband died from pills. Sit down. The reports are back from the lab, Leslie. No doubt, you're pregnant. A baby. Paul's baby. <laughs> Leslie, listen to me. I'm asking that you have an abortion. Why? Leslie, what's growing inside of you isn't alive. And your body is nourishing it, giving it blood and oxygen. But when it leaves your womb, it'll be dead. There must be some mistake. There's nothing wrong with my baby. I'm healthy and Paul was healthy. You don't know everything. Olga was right. Leslie, I've been your doctor most of your life. Now, there's no mistake. What's inside your womb isn't a human being. It's a parasite. It'll drag you down and it'll kill you. Now, we must take that parasite out of you. My mother used to bring me here. All those old people in the waiting room. None of them ever got better. Now, Leslie, you know better than to talk like that. You won't touch my baby. It'll be born healthy and you won't even be there. Olga! I know what you're going to try to do. And I'm not going to let you. Olga! Olga, take me away from here. We're not going to see any more doctors. Come on, baby. Leslie, please. Come on now. Leslie! We don't want help from you. The other officers are calling it an unsolved crime. Why do you persist? I'll find them somewhere.
woman left me. <laughs> Dr. Ford said this baby wasn't alive. But you proved him wrong. And your baby kept growing inside you. Now it wants to be born. Oh, oh I can feel it coming. Oh. All the pain and misery. Them doctors wanted to rip the baby from inside you. It's coming now, Leslie. We should call Dr. Ford. No. He'll be all right. We'll make him well and strong. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Please, Leslie. Let me call Dr. Ford. No doctors, Olga. But that baby's gonna die. He won't take milk. He won't die. Bring him to me. We'll try once more.
pretty little horses, dapples and greys, pintos and bays, all the pretty little My mother found it difficult to tell me that I wasn't like other children. I could never share life with whole human beings. I slowly learned that the thing that raped my mother and fathered me was no living, feeling man, but a malignant force, a cancer, that refused to be destroyed. It wasn't only her blood that my mother gave to keep me alive. Her youth and her own life were sucked up into the syringe that fed me. I came to hate Caleb Croft for creating me in his image and for using my mother as a spawning ground for his evil. I'm determined to destroy him. I've tracked him from country to country to the colleges and universities where he finds a fresh young blood he craves. Luck or an animal's sense of danger keeps him always one step ahead of me. But the circle is closing. Soon I'll meet my father face to face. Soon I'll have him where I want him. course on folk mythology and the occult? Yes. Yeah. I'm Anita Jacoby, working on my doctor. I'm James Eastman. Hello. Hi. These night courses are really much more interesting. All types and ages. I hear if you're not in time to get a seat, you can't take the course. I hope my roommate gets here on time. I have a place we can go to. We're not good enough for you.
Those of you who don't have seats will have to leave. I'm sorry, but we just don't have the space. I know that some of you are lawyers, teachers, bored housewives with nothing better to do with their evening. But with any luck, a few may learn something. My name is Lockwood. <laughs> Professor Adrian Lockwood. <laughs> it's called goober dust by the older blacks of the deep south. Sprinkle it around your enemy's bed at night, and he will die in his sleep. Ground up peanut husks. That's all it is. Can it really kill? No. Not here with automobiles and electric lights. We could never believe such a thing. But strip away the light, the automobile. The antibiotics that keep us one step ahead of death, and we are left with pathetic, frightened little creatures wandering in a cruel and hostile world. So we fear the gods, demons, devils, bats, banshees, angels, vampires. Yes, as a matter of fact, vampires. It is those answers, answers born out of fear, that we are here to study. It's interesting that you should all turn out here tonight in overflow numbers. Is it that, like primitive man, you're still filled with fear? With a nameless dread that you cannot shake? Death. Who are you? Anita Jacoby. Death has been the chief dread. The one obsessive preoccupation of man since he first crawled from the cave. Of all the animals, only man is aware that as surely as he was born, he will someday die. The individual who can inflict death has the complete respect of the other man. They are in awe of him. Death is also very beautiful. Some loved ones we have seen in death never looked more peaceful, more serene. What is your name? Anne Arthur. I'm an instructor in English literature. I'm sorry if the subject frightens you. You sure no one holds you responsible, Professor. Ah, the voice interested in vampires. Yes. I plan a paper on Charles Croydon. Charles Croydon is not generally known. Perhaps you would care to share your knowledge with the rest of the class. Thank you. He was a 17th century English nobleman. It's said that he and his wife were vampires. They were hunted by the Church of England. They sought refuge in a small Puritan settlement in Massachusetts. Croydon was responsible for a series of gruesome murders in New Salem. His wife was, in fact, burned as a vampire in 1846. When 
Croydon was never found. Then if we are to accept the traditional legend that vampires can only be killed by the ritual of the wooden stake through the heart, Charles Croydon must still be alive today. But why must he hide? A vampire with all the awesome, terrible power of Satan. All the black arts at his command. Why must he be forced to scurry like a frightened rat? But as a vampire, what choice would he have? He would have to protect himself against the anger of righteous people. You would think the man's personality would compel him to stand up. To terrify all the puny mortals around him. And not to hide in dark holes behind assumed names. Like Caleb Croft. Who is Caleb Croft? Even I know the answer to that one, Professor. Well, let us hear it. Caleb Croft was a murderer and a rapist. Accidentally electrocuted in the late 30s. His body mysteriously disappeared. And a police officer believing Croft to be a vampire was found near Croft's burial place. Dead. Drained of all his blood. These facts are all published in a book that links Caleb Croft and Charles Croydon. What book is that? Let me see. Oh, yes, it's called The Mysteries of New England. But there weren't many copies made. You seem very interested in the Croft case, Professor. Yes, I am, Mr. Eastman. James Eastman. Mr. Eastman, if you remain in the class long enough, you too may develop an interest more than you bargained for. Professor Lockwood, I just wanted to thank you for an excellent class this evening. I can have a way with your students. What way is that? Compelling. Students often drift during my lectures. They are fools. Come closer, Miss Arthur. Into the light. You did not come here to discuss your students, Miss Arthur. At first you reminded me of my dead wife, Sarah, but then I went beyond that. could capture such grace. Forgive me if I seem to be compelling. That quality is inspired by you. Please, Professor Lockwood. I feel very helpless at this moment. I'm sorry. Perhaps another time, another place. I would just like to leave here now. You're free to leave. No tricks. No goober dust. My work is the most important thing to me. I know.
said. I was a photographer's model once. You'll have to leave now. The book, Miss Fenwick? The library has very strict rules. I can't make any exceptions. You led me to believe that I could take it. I did not. All that business about your hair and your eyes. Good night, Professor. You were using me. You have got to go. <laughs> using me. sort of thing. <laughs> All you have to do is move. You do move. <laughs> yeah, I move. Look, I'd like to start by just sitting down. Agreed. On one condition. You stand right here for one minute and let me do all the work. Charles Croydon, vampire with Caleb Croft. I agree with T.J. Boyd, they're one and the same. But I think that you know more. Or well, Professor Lockwood knows more. Or well, you know something about each other. I swear you were a vampire if I hadn't seen you walking around in the sunlight. I'm sorry. Oh, Anne. I'm sorry. 
sorry about all this time. We played some records and called some people, and now we got a thing going here. Oh, it's just that I'm so tired, that's all. Professor Lockwood, where are you out? Sounds as if you've been hearing some gossip. You and Professor Lockwood were together after class, that's all. We were. He was deeply affected by the death of his wife, Sarah. It seems I resemble her. Thanks very much for inviting me. Good night. Wait. Look, you're never going to get a chance to cook your dinner here. James lives just about. Go borrow some pots and pans. I'd be happy to. All right. See some spaghetti? No, thank you. And Chianti, then? All right. Do you have a corkscrew? <laughs> yeah. Will you do me the honor, then? Pleasure. Cat. <laughs> the meat's mine. Oh. I guess the next logical question is, how come we're not 20 years old and playing the bongo drums downstairs? Sorry, I'm embarrassing you. Oh, I don't feel like stuffing myself with any damn spaghetti.
beautiful with you, James. I hope you don't think I'm always so aggressive. You're not disappointed. Anne isn't here. I suspect she's spending the night with James Eastman. Well, how interesting. You don't have to play games with me, Professor. It's three o'clock in the morning. I know why you've come. Then I trust you're mature enough to be discreet about my interest in Miss Arthur. But Professor Lockwood, you are acting almost human. I fail to appreciate your humor, Miss Jacoby. Then I'll share it with you. Mysteries of New England by T.J. Boyd. I've researched every written word on the black art. The occult, voodoo, witches, vampires. Boyd describes you perfectly, Lockwood, Croft, Croydon. <laughs> You're imagining things, Miss Jacoby. I want you to make me a vampire. Slowly mix my blood with yours. Until one night, while I'm bathing in the light of the full moon, the black magic will take place. And I will come to you as your bride and serve you for all eternity. And if I were Croft or Croydon, the idea of a companion for all eternity, the relationship would become a bit stale, don't you think? I pride myself on my imagination. Entertainment would be kept in constant flow. I could scream now and the halls would be filled with people. You would be dismissed just for being here at this hour. But I won't scream. Because you are Charles Croydon. Vampire. They took your wife Sarah from you. And burned her. I want to take her place. I love you, Charles. Please, take me, Charles. Take me. Caleb Croft and Charles Croydon. 
You shall have your wish, Anita. When do we start? Tomorrow night, at my home. I should leave now. I'll see there's no one in the hall. QT is enough for me. God, if I found a needle like that, I'd be in a straitjacket. But here you sit, sweet as cream, ready for tonight's seance. Oh, I guess it must be English fortitude. Cake is so delicious. I can't believe dead people haven't found a way to eat it. After all, they're just like us. Only crossed over, I mean. Do you think Professor Locke was really going to make contact tonight? I can't say it's impossible. 
I'm so glad you feel that way. Sam says I'm too emotional about these things. But nobody could accuse you of being too emotional. Yeah. Well, I didn't mean it like that. I'm sure you can be very emotional when you want to be. It's just that you're usually so cerebral. But me, I'm a mystic. Sam says I eat too much to be a mystic, but look how fat Buddha was. Is Sam inside? Yes. He's still poking around. I'll die if Professor Lockwood comes back and finds him looking under rugs for loudspeakers and, and hidden wires. Find anything? The house seems legit. But to afford it, he's got to be a syndicate bagman at least. It's going to be genuine, I know it. Look, Carol, just because I couldn't find anything doesn't mean it's not here. Sam, don't spoil things tonight. I promise not to smoke, drink, or use abusive language. I came here for a spook show, and I'll cooperate. But that doesn't mean I have to believe it. You know, Carol's been three inches off the ground ever since Anita and that librarian got it. Both bodies drained of blood. It must have been a vampire. Look what I bought. Me, Carol Moskowitz. I'll put my trust in a 45 automatic. But you promised to go along. Okay, okay. Mine is not the reason why. Mine is just to do or die. I took the liberty of dismissing the servants. Their very presence in the building could be distracting. You make a groovy medium, Professor. It is not I who will be the medium. Who then? Anne? Why Anne? Because it is you who is most qualified. Oh, yes. If you remember our conversation one evening after class. I remember. I was testing your ability to submit to suggestion as I have tested each one of you. And I have found you to be the most developed of all my students. I don't believe a word of the professor. Passion in any direction is welcome here. I promise you, Sam, that if you just try to cooperate, you will have a total experience this evening. You can't ask for any more than that, Sam. Hmm? We will all sit at the table. Miss Arthur. You will sit here. Now remember there is nothing to know and nothing that we are obliged to do except to join hands and to relax. Relax. Now, if you sit back in your chairs, close your eyes, dismiss everything from your minds. Everything, everything. Our bodies are relaxed and we will bring all our thoughts to one central part of our brain and to our shoulders, our arms, our hands, one into the other, into the other, until our minds merge slowly, one into the other, into the other. Relax, 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 relax. 
There is one who is still fighting. One who needs further help. Come on, Sam, you promised. I'm not doing anything, I tell you. Now try. Try. That's better now. Sarah. My wife, Sarah. Anne is here with us all. Uh, she is ready to receive you now. Uh, Take her, Sarah. Uh, Your mind and her body with me uh, uh, to all eternity. Uh, Sarah. Uh, Sarah. It's Anita's voice. I've crawled the floors of hell to face you, Charles. Anita, tell us the truth about Caleb Croft and Charles Croydon. It was you fighting me. You calling Anita. You can tell us about Croft, Croydon, and Lockwood. The same man, the same vampire. I love you, Charles. A moment more and I shall become Anne. Serve you for all the nights of all time. You will not pull this Anne's body. Too late, Charles. Too late. I'm here now with all of you. Fight her, Anne. Cast her out. Fight Anne. Fight. No, Anne. Submit to me. He'll murder you as he did me. James was right, Anne. Lockwood is the vampire. All of you. Professor Lockwood is the vampire. And look at me. Look into my eyes. Cast Anita out, Anne. Cast her out. the rest of you. But I think... Just what do you think, Sam? I think either you're a vampire or Anne is a marvelous actress and voice impressionist. And that the both of you staged this whole thing for the effect. And just how effective would you say it was? It was damn effective. But you're not worried that I'm a real vampire. Or that I'm going to kill all of you in this room. I'm not worried. Is uh, anybody else worried? I'm not afraid. I even left my crucifix upstairs. You remember what you said about us getting together again? Because we both want him? Yes. Well, I want to. I've locked all the exits. I am Charles Croydon.
This is ridiculous. Come on, Letitia. Let's get the hell out of here. One more step and I'll shoot. Stay